Hi, I'm Carol Fraser and I'm here to talk to you today about the potential dangers and side effects of some of the preservatives that are in our foods. Now, I'm a qualified nutritionist, I'm a plant-based nutritionist and I treat food as my medicine. And on natural workshops, I show people and educate people on the type of foods that are more conducive for our well-being. I've also worked as an allergy chef at a preschool um, where there were children that I cooked for 50 a day and some of them had some very complex allergies. So I also show people how to manage their diet around certain allergies. But today I want to highlight just two of the preservatives that are contained in our foods. I'm going to give you some references in the description as well so it's not just me saying these things i'm going to be quoting from the research sites um, so i can give you the proper information and i just want to start with this um, in terms of the food.gov.uk website now they have um, approved additives and e-numbers approved by the Food Standards Agency and they quote that additives, e-numbers uh, for colours, preservatives, antioxidant, uh, antioxidants, sorry, sweeteners, emulsifiers, stabilisers, thickeners and other types of additives are mentioned there. So you can look them up as a reference and have a look there. And they quote that most additives are only permitted to be used in certain foods and are subject to specific quantitative limits in conjunction with appropriate legislation. Now, I don't, rem I don't know if you can remember, if you live in the UK and maybe there's some other programs similar out there um, that, have, that have come up in your region about... Um, some families or couples that um, were on this program where they did an analysis of what foods they ate in a week and what they would do is to actually lay out everything that they consumed in one week and they were horrified you know the families the couples were horrified at not just the vast amount of foods they were consuming, but it was the quality and type of foods that they were consuming as well. And it was heavily fat, sodium, sugar, and starch-based. Um, so you're talking about your breads, your bagels, your, your baked and bakery goods, um, you know, things like crisps, which are all your starches, um, rice and pastas, all the common things that, you know, we eat and we're eating in too much volume that's causing us problems with our well-being. And also what they were most shocked about were the foods that they were eating unconsciously as well, that they, they, they hadn't even thought, um, my God, you know, am I really consuming these foods as often and as much in a week? So that, that's just an example, and many of us can, re can relate to that and may have already made changes, but a lot of us are still consuming these foods and on you know, a large scale. And whilst um, there is a prescribed amount of additives that are deemed as safe, we're eating, consuming a high amount of these foods that contain these particular additives. Now, Let's take bread as an example, for instance. And I went through the research and I found a site, and I'm going to quote the site, um, that is called yourhealthremedy.com. And on yourhealthremedy.com, and I'm going to quote some of the things from the references I found, so it's all factual for you. They have a list 
of E numbers, um, if not all the E numbers that are contained in our foods, and they provide the um, information on the possible side effects and dangers. And I'm quoting from this um, particular website by looking at bread as an example. Now, when I looked at the research, just in terms of the um, preservatives alone that are contained in bread, that is so vast, just bread alone, I couldn't, if I, I would, it would take me an, an hour or so to actually go through and nitpick through these um, additives to tell you what side effects or dangers there are. But I've picked out two um, out of an array of many, many E numbers. I'm focusing on one particular E number, which is E927. And that E number is a dosicarbonamide known as ADA. Now, ADA, I'm quoting here from the intechopen.com website, and I will link all the references here. Now, ADA is a, let me just scroll up to find it, maturing agent used in flour premixes, providing immediate oxidation when water is added, and it's consumed in the mixer in the early stages of the baking process. Now the use of ADA is banned in EU countries, but is still used in others. The key reason for the ban is the presence of a reaction product, which is present in breadcrumb and the crust, posing a health risk. Now that um, chemical is semi-carbazide. I may be pronouncing them wrong, but that's semi-carbazide or bazide, however you pronounce it, and I will put all the reference links, okay? Also, just to mention, because it has been banned, um, in flour and in European countries, only, Euro, um, only absorbic acid is permitted in place of ADA, okay? Now let's, let's take a look at absorbic acid as the replacement for this banned product, for this banned ingredient, okay? This preservative. Absorbic acid, which you'll, you'll, you'll probably see on your products as the E number E300, or it will state as absorbic acid. Now, absorbic acid is commonly used as an improver in the baking industry. In some countries, it is the only oxidation improver allowed. It has an intermediate speed of reaction and its effective, its effect, sorry, is greatly noticed in the proofing chamber. Now, absorbic acid itself is a reducing agent. Some plants, and some people may give you the argument that some plants and fruits have high levels of absorbic acid, but listen further. And this presents an opportunity to use them to provide absorbic acid, the absorbic acid requirement in bakery products, right? Seems plausible, it's natural. Comes from our fruits and our plants. However, it's a chemically <laughs> synthesized version. And this chemically synthesized version has an E number, okay, hence E300. And it must be declared on the label as absorbic acid or vitamin C or E300. 
So if you're looking at your labels and you see E300, from watching this video, you'll have learnt it's a synthesized version of ascorbic acid. It's not the naturally derived absorbic acid from your fruits and plants. But it can also be labelled as vitamin C, which looks pretty innocent and quite healthy. But let me talk to you further about the adozy carbon amide. I'm trying to pronounce it properly for you. It's such a long word, but it is known as ADA, and we'll refer to it as ADA from now on in, which is the E927 preservative. Now, this is also known as, <laughs> this is, you know, excuse me for laughing, but you'll understand more about what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm quoting this from the um, yourhealthremedy.com uh, research site that E927, the adozy carbonamide, is also known as yoga mat. It's an odorless orange chemical substance that is found in close to 500 food products. It is manufactured through a, reac a reaction of urea and dihydrazine sulfate under high temperature and pressure, followed by oxidation with sodium hypochlorite, commonly used as a bleaching agent or a disinfectant. Now let's look at the uses of this ADA, okay? ADA has non-food applications such as electronics, photography, and an industrial chemical used to make shoe rubber, yoga mats, hence the nickname yoga mats for this additive, and synthetic leather. That's right. <laughs> um, it's generally recognized as safe and approved by the FDA for use as a dough conditioner to make it more elastic. Now, let me just um, elaborate a bit on the elasticity in bread. Now, we get elasticity also from the gluten that's produced by wheat. And what we're seeing is a shocking number of people that are becoming gluten intolerant. And gluten, in general, um, can be um, a problem um, with people in terms of the amount of gluten that we're consuming. So in general, it, you know, having a large amount of gluten in our diet is not conducive to our well-being, but we're seeing an increasing number of people who are becoming gluten intolerant. And if you can imagine, ADA used as a dough conditioner is used to make bread more elastic. So, in bread making, they, it's also used as a whitening substance in cereal flour. You can find it in bagels, bread, pizza, pastries, tortilla, hot dogs, hamburger buns. In addition, it's approved for use as a blowing agent in sealing caps for food, such as uh, ketchup bottles. Subway, the world's largest food franchise, even said that ADA is an extremely common bread ingredient that is fully approved and recognized as safe by the FDA. ADA must be declared in the statement of ingredients and can be added to flour at levels of up to 45 ppm. 
Now, since it is a part of the bread making process, uh, in particular, just part of the flour making process, it's not always listed on your. So you can assume that it's in most products which are made with white flour. The Subway fast food chain decided to remove ADA from its bread making process. Many bread products, however, still contain this chemical or some form of, uh, sorry, or some other form of an agent to ensure flavor, consistency and texture. Now let's have a look at the list of food chains particularly fast food chains that uh, include this ADA substance and that's our E927 preservative, okay? And let's start with Starbucks. So Starbucks have ADA in their chocolate croissant and butter croissants. McDonald's have in their bakery they have it in their bakery style bun regular bun bagel english muffin um, sesame seed bun and big mac bun also burger king have ada in their artisan style bun speciality buns croissant sesame seed bun, homestyle Caesar croutons, English muffin and French toast sticks. And among that listing are US fast food outlets such as Wendy's, Jack in the Box and chick fil if I've pronounced that right, is that right? Chick-fil-A. No, sorry. <laughs> Chick-fil-A, that's correct, Chick-fil-A. So have a, have a look at this website I'm quoting here. I'll put it in the description, yourhealthremedy.com. And I haven't listed all of the foods with those um, other US outlets, but you can find all the information in there as to what food products contain the ADA. Now, Lisa McComb from McDonald's, who's a spokeswoman, said that azodi carbonamide, which is our E927 preservative known as ADA, is commonly used throughout the baked, good in baked goods industry. And this includes some of the bread goods on our menu. Now, if you're wondering how old this um, reference site is, it's this is this is um, been written in December um, 2019. So, unless there's been, you know, um, updated research, I'm reading from this website, yourhealthremedy.com, and um, this is printed in December 2019. Now let's look at the let's look at the countries where ADA has been banned. That includes Europe, Singapore, and Australia restricted the use of ADA because this substance is considered to be a respiratory sensitizer. Now that's really that's really concerning. Especially at a time like this. And that can cause asthmatic and other types of allergic reactions. Now let's look at the side effects of ADA. There are two chemicals that form when the bread is baked with ADA. One breakdown product, urethane, is a recognized carcin uh, sorry carcin <laughs> sorry is a recognized carcinog carcinogen sorry it's a recognized carcinogen let me read that again 
So there are two chemicals that form when the bread is baked with ADA. One breakdown product, urethane, is recognized as a carcinogen. When ADA is used at its highest administration, admin, administrable level, it leads to urethane based in bread that acts as an adverse effect on humans. The second product is semi-carbazide that caused cancers of the blood vessels and lungs in studies on mice but poses a negligible risk to humans. Now according to the World Health Organization report, regular occupational exposure to ADA can lead to allergies and asthma. Furthermore, the World Health Organization report notes many of those who developed respiratory complications and asthma experienced symptoms within just three months of exposure to this chemical. And it goes on, look, I'm gonna give you all the links to this so you can actually have a look at this research yourself. Now, more importantly, the World Health Organization report noted that physical exposure to ADA caused reoccurring dermatitis. Now, how much of an increase have we seen in skin issues relating to dermatitis and eczema? There are hundreds of thousands of people across the world and it's reoccurring a lot, mainly with infants. Um, and we have to look at all the relatable things. And I always, you know, I'm passionate about trying to get the message across, I've been doing for years, about the importance of diet. And whilst there are other factors, you know, genetics, environmental, and, and even genetics can be linked to the, the foods that our ancestors were eating and not too distant ancestors, and it's genetically passed on. But environmental factors, yes, are a consideration. And this ADA is used um, for other, you know, industrial type uses. Um, and it's reoccurring as a um, physical exposure of ADA, um, which is causing reoccurring dermatitis. So it's, you know, it's good to understand these things and really look into the research because when we're looking at the root cause of our health issues, it's important to be informed and to look at that research ourselves and to make the right choices. Now, the World Health Organization report concluded the level risk of uncer um, is uncertain Therefore, exposure levels to this chemical should be reduced as much as possible. We're not in, con we're not in control of, of uh, how much it's reduced um, for our safety. And, but one of the things we do have is control over our own bodies and what we put into it. And... At this time of the year, you know, a lot of us are thinking, well, you know, it's October, we're coming up to the fest festive season, Thank Thanksgiving is a... And I want, I don't want to deprive myself. I want to be able to treat myself to the foods that I love and enjoy at this time of the year. And then I'll think about it, you know, in the new year, perhaps, when I want, you know, perhaps if I want to lose weight, detox, or think about changing my diet but we go on this loop 
So we revert back to those foods. And what we don't realize is things like, I'm going to give you an example of addictive foods like dairy, um, sugar, of course, um, starches and fats and simple carbs. These are so addictive. So whilst we might say, well, we'll have them for this time only and then you know, we'll, we'll, we'll think about the consequences later, the consequences may be too late. And we're seeing a lot of these lifestyle illnesses developing at a lot more rapid rate. And it's not even down to age anymore. You know, it can occur in any of us at, an, at any age. And it is largely to do with our diet. So I'm always, a, listen, I'm about solutions. I'm not here to just bring you doom and gloom, give you the bad news. I've always been about solutions. And if you haven't already watched my previous video on, you know, five ways, um, five uh, ways of immune, um, you know, take immunity for health and sustainability, go back and watch that video and just know that on naturalworkshops.com i am sharing information and solutions there you know for instance in terms of like festive eating um, there are so many things that you can do and it doesn't have to you know blow your budget like we do around this time of the year when we're, we're stocking up for you know our thanksgiving and christmas um, Eating whole foods, plant-based foods can be light on your pocket. I show people really easy ways to implement things like their own ice cream. Very easy, very quick, very nutritious and delicious ways. Um, things like a no-bake chocolate and um, coconut cheesecake, truffles, um, baked goods like your cakes your muffins, bread even, and gluten-free too. And I treat food as my medicine, but I also enjoy my food. And you don't have to be deprived. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to this channel and make sure you click the notification button so that you are getting all the updates where I'll be sharing a lot more information tips and practical solutions on how you can best manage your health. We're talking about prevention as well as cure and management of common lifestyle illnesses. So click on the notification button and get updated on the information that I'm going to give you that will give you some practical ways to actually help you to support your well-being. And thank you for watching.